Manufacturers distribute toluene diisocyanate, commonly called TDI, in a variety of packages, including tank containers, also referred to as isotainers. In this section, we will discuss guidance for unloading toluene diisocyanate from bottom unloading tank containers. This will include preparation for unloading, documentation, regulatory information, pre-unloading, personal protective equipment, connecting, transfer operations, disconnecting, and preparation for return. The receiving, handling, and shipment of TDI require compliance with all federal, state, and local regulations concerning hazardous materials. Make sure you know these regulations and follow them at all times. It's recommended that a comprehensive checklist be developed and followed throughout the unloading sequence. Here's one example of an unloading process to consider. Let's begin by assisting the driver in positioning the tank container at the unloading station. Make sure that the driver has set the emergency brake once the truck is in position. Shut down tractor's engine unless it will be used for air compressor. Place wheel chocks under the tires of the trailer chassis as well as the rear tires of the tractor to prevent movement in either direction. As an added precaution, you may wish to put barricades or warning lights around the unloading area. Check all paperwork checked for accuracy. Verify the driver's paperwork to validate trailer number, product identification tag, security seals, that the material being received is the correct TDI product, and that the way ticket shows the quantity being delivered to help ensure the volume of the delivery will fit the storage tank. Review the values on the certificate of analysis to determine whether the product meets required specifications. Once all paperwork is verified, check the tank container to make sure the numbers on the security seals match the seal numbers shown on the paperwork. Also confirm that the seals are not broken and have not been tampered with in any manner. Next, verify that the pad pressure and temperature are within the required parameters. If they are not, contact the shipper for further instructions. Check the hazard placards. Make sure that they are correct for the product noted on the shipping documents. The U.S. Department of Transportation, DOT, regulates the transportation of toluene diisocyanate. Although there are various regulations covering the shipment of TDI, it will typically be classified UN2078 toluene diisocyanate class 6.1 packing group 2. The letters R, Q are entered either before or after the description of the shipment when individual packages contain 100 pounds or more of TDI. The toxic placard with the UN marking 2078 displayed is the normal placard for shipments of this material. TDI containers must have the required labels or placards applied. The shipping paper must include an emergency contact telephone number that is manned 24 hours a day and appropriate emergency response information. The storage and handling of TDI at your facility may be subject to other regulations as well. So, adapt the process as required. Once the paperwork and tank container checks are complete, the next step is to check your own equipment. If the content of the tank container is to be offloaded into a receiving tank, make sure that the tank is the correct one for the product and that there is enough room in the tank to hold this shipment. Clearly identify the unloading connection on the receiving line. The unloading operator will show the driver the location of the nearest eyewash station and safety shower. The driver will show the operator where the container's remote emergency shutoff is located. Transfer hoses for TDI products are typically two inches in diameter to differentiate them from the three inch diameter hoses and fittings generally used for polyol or resin products. Hoses may also be color coded and or labeled to assist in eliminating transfer errors. Because TDI reacts with moisture, it's extremely important that the hoses are dry. If there is any possibility of a problem with the hose, set the hose aside, tag it, and get another hose to complete the transfer. All these checks in this example process may seem unnecessary because the operation is routine, but taking these precautions every time 
will help prevent product contamination and a potential overflow. Tank containers are usually unloaded with nitrogen or dry air pressure. An alternative method would be offloading using a pump while adding nitrogen or dry air to maintain a dry atmosphere inside the tank container. When unloading with either of these methods, leading industry practice is that all discharge vapors be absorbed or scrubbed free of TDI. A closed loop vapor exchange system Using a product pump is another means of unloading TDI. Closed loop means that no vapors escape from the system into the atmosphere, and no moisture from the atmosphere enters the system. If dry air is used for unloading, it is extremely important to check for signs of moisture. Many companies recommend the dew point of negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. In order to avoid contact or exposure to TDI, Wear personal protective equipment during hookup and disconnect activities. This includes appropriate impervious clothing, such as a chemical protective suit, chemical resistant gloves, and boots, as well as an approved full face air supplied respirator. Both the unloading operator and the truck driver wear personal protective equipment. The driver will make connections to the tank container and operate the tank container valves and all other tank container equipment. The unloading operator takes responsibility for connecting the unloading hose to the receiving line and operating the valves in the receiving system. Begin the connection process by checking the nitrogen or dry air source. Make sure the gauge is working properly and that the hose is attached securely. Remove the closure cap or plugs from the nitrogen inlet on the tank container and install the required bleed valve fitting. Check the hose gasket for splits or cracks that could prevent a good seal. Before connecting the product discharge hose, inspect the fitting on the receiving line. Verify it is in good working condition. If it is a female fitting, inspect the gasket for splits or cracks that could cause a leak or spill. Replace the gasket if necessary, and make sure you dispose of the old one properly. Inspect the unloading hose and make sure that the quick disconnect fittings and gaskets are in good working order so that the connection will be secure. If everything is okay with the hoses, gaskets, and fittings, connect the hose to the receiving line and secure it. The next step is to cut the security seal and connect the unloading hose to the tank container. Remove the closure cap or blank flange from the product discharge outlet and install the fitting with the bleed valve. Connect the nitrogen or dry air supply hose to the nitrogen inlet on the tank container and secure it. Now, attach the unloading hose to the product discharge outlet and secure it. After all connections have been properly secured and the checklist completed, Sign the driver's paperwork indicating a good hookup has been made. Now, the transfer operation may begin. Next, open the tank container's internal valve and then carefully open the external valve. Then, open the receiving line valve. Open the nitrogen inlet valve on the tank container and then open the valve on the nitrogen or dry air source. Introduce nitrogen gas or dry air into the top of the tank container, usually up to about 5 to 10 PSIG. The product should now begin flowing through the unloading line. Once you have verified that there are no leaks in the system, the nitrogen or dry air pressure will need to be increased to an acceptable pressure, usually between 10 and 20 PSIG, depending on the desired rate of unloading. The pressure should remain constant within the tank container until unloading is complete. Do not exceed the working pressure of the tank container. Refer to the tank container's nameplate for the rated pressure if you are not sure. During the unloading process, operators stay in the area to monitor the transfer of product. Outside the U.S., different regulations may apply. In the U.S., the Department of Transportation 
requires that a qualified person attend the unloading operation. Attend means that the person is in attendance, is alert, has an unobstructed view of the unloading operation, and stays within 25 feet during the entire process. According to DOT, to be qualified, the person in attendance understands the potential hazards of TDI, knows the procedures to follow in an emergency, and has the authority and means to move the tank container. In addition, follow other safety precautions. No smoking, vaping, or use of tobacco products. No eating and no drinking during the transfer process. Monitor the amount of product being transferred at all times. This can be accomplished using an inline flow meter by watching the tank container weight if there is a truck scale at the unloading station or by monitoring the level rise in the storage tank. Using two methods of level measurement adds a layer of safety and reduces risks of overflow. Don't rely on automatic shutoff systems to stop the unloading process. Such systems are not foolproof. There is absolutely no substitute for an attentive operator. Monitor the operation to ensure that the pad of nitrogen or dry air is maintained in the tank container. Once the tank container has been emptied, disconnect the system with the same care as it was connected. First, close the nitrogen or dry air inlet valve on the tank container and shut off the nitrogen or dry air source. Then, close the internal valve on the tank container. Wait a suitable time to allow completion of the closure shutoff process, usually about a minute. Then, open the internal valve to blow the hose clear to the storage tank. Repeat as necessary to ensure tank container and hose are empty. Be careful not to overpressurize the receiving tank during the hose clearing operation. After the hose is cleared, close the internal valve on the tank container and the valve on the receiving line. Close tank and receiving line simultaneously to avoid backflow of product into the hose. Then, open the bleed valve to depressurize the unloading hose. Make sure you collect any excess product in a catch container that contains a neutralizing solution. Now, close the bleed valve and the external valve on the tank container. Once this has been completed, carefully disconnect the unloading hose from the tank container and the receiving line. Use a catch container under the ends of the hose to capture any product drippage. Cap and plug the ends of the hose immediately after disconnection. Remove the bleed valve fitting. Then apply the closure cap to the tank container's discharge outlet and the closure cap or plug to the fitting on the receiving line. Recheck to see that the tank container is still pressurized, usually a minimum 5 to 10 PSIG of nitrogen or dry air. This will help ensure that moisture will not enter the tank container and react with the residual TDI on the return trip. Finally, depressurize and carefully disconnect the dry air or nitrogen hose from the tank container's inlet valve. Remove the bleed valve fitting and replace the closure cap or plug. Return empty tank container with positive pad of dry air or nitrogen gas. Sign the delivery report and note any unusual problems or delays that might have occurred. After removing the barricades and wheel chocks, the tank container can be released. In this section, we have discussed guidance for safely unloading toluene diisocyanate from bottom unloading tank containers, including preparation for unloading, documentation, regulatory information, pre-unloading, personal protective equipment, connecting, transfer operations, disconnecting, and preparation for return. If you have any further questions or are unsure of the actions required of you, ask your supervisor or team leader or contact the product manufacturer. For more information on topics covered in this section, consult sources including the following literature developed by the Center for the Polyurethanes Industry. Guidelines for Diisocyanate Storage Tank Systems. Guidelines for Receiving and Unloading TDI.